What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. Today I have a super exciting episode planned for you guys because one of the most common questions we get is, Luke, how do you keep deer out of your garden? This is a common question because I think a lot of people battle these deer that come into their garden and treat their garden like just a living salad bar. So what we want to do is we want to keep deer out of the garden so we can coexist peacefully. Now in years past, if you don't know where we're at, obviously, here's some context, we're at the cottage garden. In years past, we had plants that were filling up the entire garden space. Not only did we plant in raised beds, but we planted pretty much any space available with plants. And this caused deer to have a hard time to jump in because deer won't jump into a space that they can't feel comfortable jumping out of. So the first way to keep deer out of your garden space is by simply planting it full with plants. Now, the, the issue is that it takes some time to get those plants fully mature and growing and, and large to where your whole garden space is filled up. And a lot of times, the deer will come in and take advantage of your young seedlings. So, a lot of people, they resort to, uh, you know, scarecrows, pie tins, and you'll find that even things that, that are supposed to scare deer only scare deer for so long. Um, you can use a lot of different contraptions that only work for out a week because as soon as the deer realize that they're not going to be harmed by whatever that is, they just, they don't even bat an eye at it anymore. So really the best way is through uh, just actually fencing. But the problem is, is finding tall enough fencing is pretty difficult until I came across this amazing method that SSL family dad actually showed on his channel when he was, I believe he was protecting his pumpkins. And it worked extremely well, and I thought, you know what, that's an amazing method to uh, to bring to the masses. And so if you guys have not checked out, first of all, gotta give credit where credit's due, if you guys have not checked out SSL Family Dad, Todd's a super great guy, and I recommend going and checking out his channel and saying hi and, and congratulating him on actually hitting 100,000 subscribers. So, Todd, good job. Uh, so anyways, I learned this method over at Todd's channel, and he uses a super tall, uh, eight or 10 foot post, and then he uses fishing line. He uses really strong fishing line. And his reasoning behind it, it made a whole lot of sense, was that deer, because they don't like to jump over something that they don't know how tall it is, the fishing line is clear. You can probably hardly see this. Well, maybe in the light you can see it. But when it's, you know, when it's far away, you really can't see it because it's invisible. And at night you can't see it because it's clear. And so deer, if they walk up to it, they're going to feel it with their, their face first before they jump over it as they're kind of gauging the height. And because they can't see where it ends, reasoning being they don't they don't jump over it. And uh, so that's what we're going to do today. I'm gonna to show you guys just how simple it is. It's super inexpensive. And uh, we have always used the wooden snow fencing. Now the wooden snow fencing has worked. Like I said, it's worked really great. But as deer become more and more daring and food becomes you know more scarce, they resort to you know more extreme measures to get their food and they've been jumping into our garden now the snow fencing is only about uh four or five feet tall uh, i think it's five foot tall snow fencing but by the time we pounded it in the ground it's about four feet or so and like i said that's worked for a really long time but it's no longer working as the deer are getting a little little smarter or a little stronger one of the two and uh, so we need something else to kind of keep the deer out of the, car, uh, out of the cottage garden here. So let's go, I'll show you the method. I think you guys can really use this to your advantage. Let's go. So what we have here is we have a, a it's just a uh, square post. I believe this is it's probably about maybe a two by two post, it seems like. Um, dimensionally, it's roughly like an inch and three quarters, about that. What we're going to do is we're going to take the fishing line, we're going to tie it around the first post here, and we're going to pull it taut through all four corners. You want to make sure that these are sunken into the ground far enough so that they're not all loose because the, the worst thing you need is to have your, your uh, fishing line sagging, especially because uh, birds will come and land on them and the weight of the birds, they would be like a, a, uh, a, a trapeze artist on your, on your uh, rope there, or a tight rope I should say, and, um, and it'll eventually cause it to sag. So what we want to do is just tie a loose knot just to get it started, nothing crazy. So the next thing we can do is if we don't want to tie it, it's actually pretty easy to use these insulators. Now these insulators are just a, uh, like a little plastic tube that uh, has a nail running through it. You can just stick it right into this post here and you can wrap it up around there. It's pretty convenient that you can use that as well. Those, those can be found at any hardware store. And all we're going to do is we're going to simply pull this tight and run it down the length 
of the garden. We have another post here. And all we're going to do is just wrap it. We don't even need to tie it, just wrap it. And the nice thing is that the thicker, the ga or, uh, not gauge, the, uh, st the stronger the fishing line, I should say the more pounds of test that it has, fishing line is, is rated in pounds of test. This is 25 pound test. The stronger it is, it'll actually begin cutting into the, the soft pine of the posts. So it kind of secures itself so it doesn't slide. Just keep, keep going down. Make sure it's pulled nice and tight. And we secure it in, it's just gonna, it's just gonna cut right in. A couple wraps and we're good. And we're just gonna keep doing this through all, all the corners. Let's keep doing this through all the corners until we are all done. And we'll see you back where we started. All right, so we got it all wrapped around all the corner posts here. And then we're just going to tie it with another couple knots here. Most of the job is done. When you wrap it real tight, it sinks into that pine and it actually sec secures itself. So you don't have to worry necessarily about it coming loose, but you just don't want it to, uh, you don't want it to get loose over time. So a couple knots and you're good, but make sure it's nice and tight, which it is. And, uh, it should, uh, it should have a noticeable snap to it so it there's no sag. So now all we're gonna do is just keep running continuous wraps through. You wanna do a wrap about every, about every foot or so. Um, so we'll do about three wraps here until we meet the bottom of the fence. And that way when they walk into it, they're gonna notice that it's there and, uh, and they won't be able to tell how high it is. So, all right, well, we're gonna get to it and um, get this job done. All right. I'll see you guys in about five minutes. This goji berry plant that we planted here three years ago has just taken off. It's so huge at this point. It's as tall as I am and it's absolutely loaded with new growth. I cannot wait to see all the flowers and fruit that come on this. Last year we had our very first harvest of goji berries on here and from this plant uh, we got about half a pound, maybe close to a pound of goji berries off this entire plant here and um, they were awesome when you dehydrate them. They were so delicious and it's a, it's a plant not a lot of people see but we started this thing from seed. We started this thing from seed uh, four years ago, planted it in here three years ago and it has just loved this space. So. That's awesome. And this is one of my favorite additions to the cottage garden that you guys have not seen. This actually was started from a seed that a bird just dropped when it was flying by. We had no idea what it was, but we thought, you know what, hey, let's leave it, let's see what it is. Turned out to be a, a wild iris, yellow in color. It's so pretty and it has just thrived here. It's actually been living here for the past two years and it's just, it's multiplying so rapidly that uh, before long it'll fill up this whole fire ring here. So uh, really, really happy with how that's growing. We just leave it in there, why not, right? One of the final things that people always ask are, what are those rings that you're planting in? They're awesome, they're galvanized metal fire rings. We got them from our local hardware store. They're only about 30 bucks a piece and they're super helpful to grow food in. $30 for a raised bed that never deteriorates, never rusts. They're totally safe to grow in in terms of edible food. So we've been using them and they look awesome. And they're just great because if we actually put anything else up here, a lot of the wood beds are starting to rot because of how wet the climate is up here. These never rot. They never deteriorate. They're always the same. So uh, just a tip to all you guys, just get them. They're metal, gal or they're galvanized metal fire rings. You can get them in a multiple uh, or a multitude of sizes. And they usually range from anywhere between $30 on the low end to up to $100 on the big end. But the $100 ones, they're pretty big. So check it out. Local hardware store, you can pretty much find them almost about anywhere. All right, so we just wrapped it up. We ended up doing three different layers here, or uh, three different levels. And the top one, you, can't, you probably can't see this one, but uh, this one's at right around seven and a half, eight feet. And this middle layer here, we decided to run some, uh, some green stretchy tape. 
This way at least shows the deer that there is something here because it's, it's floating here. So obviously there's a barrier. That's kind of smart. Um, if you have deer that uh, are known to leap and bound, you don't want them just to barge right into this because they'll break right through it. So this helps kind of catch their eye and say, whoa, hold on, wait, there's something there. And then uh, when they're kind of when they're kind of seeing what's around, they will uh, they'll notice that there's a lot more to this than a green twine, and they're likely to stop and uh, and not jump in their garden. And again, none of this stuff's ever 100% foolproof. You know, it's not always 100% guaranteed to work. But the fact of the matter is, is anything that we can do to help coexist with nature is great, and it helps us to grow more organically. And uh, it's just it's so much cheaper than you know deer repellents, which can cost hundreds of dollars a year that don't really work. It's a lot cheaper than, uh, than you know, super tall uh, fencing that, that can cost thousands of dollars. And in my opinion, you know, if I have to buy fresh fishing twine every other year, that fishing twine, that this literally costs three bucks at your local uh, fishing supply store, super cheap. It's, uh, it's uh, a thousand yards, or no, sorry, 220 yards. And, uh, and it's just super, super cheap. So you can buy this stuff and uh, we didn't even use it all. So it's really inexpensive and the posts themselves are about $4 a piece. So you're really not, they don't cost that much. And so this entire garden, this fencing here costs about roughly $25, $28 for the whole thing. So uh, just something to consider if you're looking for an inexpensive way to keep deer out of your garden. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure you give this video a huge green thumbs up. And let me know in the comments box below if you've tried this method. And also remember, go check out Todd's channel, the SSL Family Dad. He's a super cool guy and uh, definitely definitely is not my idea, totally his idea. And, uh, and it really works, it's awesome. So recommend trying it. And all right, we'll catch you guys later. Grow bigger, go home everyone, bye.